Previously, we started with the introduction of cancer, and you better understand what is cancer, how does it spread, how it can be related to diagnosed, staged, treatment and outcome at our place. Today's topic, cancer lab. So, ladies and gentlemen, you better appreciate that cancer lung, prostate, breast cancer, and colorectal carcinoma, they constitute more than 55% of all new cases of cancer. And death due to all these four cancers, it is 54%. Among them, cancer is at the top. In developed country like United States, yearly 170,000 new cases they are registered, and out of them, 149,000 they die because of cancer, advancement, and complication of the treatment. At our place, scenario is very different. Since there is no population-based tumor registry program, and because of our health concern, availability of facilities at grassroots level, and non-availability of data on cancer, still it is cropping up very fast. Already discussed in developed country like the United States, 1,700,000 well, new cases, and out of it is around 142, it is 149,000 deaths. Male, they are prominent, 2.1 ratio, one. The female, 20% of all female new cases. They are cancer in male, and 11% of all female cases, they are CLA. 34% of all death because of cancer in the male is due to cancer lung. 21% of all death due to cancer in female, it goes. The cancer lung, it is surpassing the CA breast in female. In female, it is dropping up very fast due to the trends and technicalities, life styles, dietary intakes, and above all, it is for the women folk, even. Male, they are not going to observe don'ts and do's of standards of health in their routine life. So, around the globe, there are certain places where the stress is more, smoking trends, dietary habits, and lifestyles they are changed, which are held responsible. The cancer lab. So, as far as incidence is concerned, it is at the top in Scotland. One four eight per hundred thousand, and throughout Northern Europe, Canada, USA, and very less in Chile, twenty five cases per hundred thousand. 
Jackie Miller's pencil. Next one, this is in Hong Kong, 34 per cent per 100,000. Less in Switzerland, it is round about 5 per 100,000. Previously, we discussed that cancer risks are there, which are held responsible for initiation, propagation, growth of abnormal cells. And there are certain factors due to which the cancer lung can be there. All histologic type of lung cancer, they are result of the changes in basal layer of the endothelium, which is endodermal in origin that attacks on DNA. And there is no repair phenomena which results as a cancer. Of lung. Aging phenomena is much more important, very less below the age of 30, and the maximum it is 329 per 100,000 at the age of 70, and the average age is 59 to 65 years. Sex already discussed. Male. They are 2.4 times as compared to the female. The male to female ratio is 2.4 ratio 1. Race in blacks. Previously, we discussed that cancer is the disease of aging phenomena in general. So, poor socioeconomic groups. They are the victim because the non availability of the health standard in the countries. And thirdly, we discuss the blacks because their typical lifestyle and diet intake, their habits, and so on. So, cancer lung is much more in blacks as compared to the white, it is 1.4. The black as compared to the white. So, genetic features in general, the tumor suppressor genes are there, which are going to make the difference between normal and abnormal cells, checking the abnormal growth of the cancer cells. Similarly, the oncogene, if you go for genetic mapping, then we can get you good. As a result, Keras, C mice, P53, and rest of the oncogenes, they are quite responsible for propagation of cancer. Diet. This is one of the major risk factors, especially the person who take the diet rich in fat, deficient in vitamin A, especially the beta carotene, deficiency in vitamin C and vitamin E, selenium as well. Smoking is held responsible for the major risk of cancer lung. If it is supplemented by liquors, alcohol, then the involvement of lung is much more as compared to the blood ones. 85% of all cancer lung, they are the result of smokers. 15% of non smokers, they also get the disease. They are passive smokers. There is a proverb okay, he smokes cigarettes and she develops cancer. So, a smoke ridden atmosphere in which the non smoker lives, they also develop cancer lung. 
smoking cigarettes, cigar pipes, and at other place, the British indigenous made all tobacco products. No time is no excuse. It is being. It, it depends. How long about someone is smoking? How many cigarettes per day? What is the length of the cigarette? Style of inhalation. It takes all the smoke, inhale deeply, or only your inhalation. So by all means, more than 100 chemicals they are produced, including the nitrosamines and uh, excuse me, what about nitrosamine and other cyclic ring containing chemicals between carbon monoxide and rest of the chemicals which are produced and keep on triggering and injuring the DNA level which provides the baseline of endothelial change resulting in the growth, propagating which cannot be stopped. The control and growth is gone, and you think they increase with the passage of time. Last time, the best poster was awarded at the top, depicting an expected mother. She's smoking, and fetus is crying. The mama don't smoke for him. So this is the hazard. At our place I previously discussed, they conducted an international study on pericardial cancer. At our place, especially in the, the women hostels, 12% of the occupant, they are smokers. Why then village? We are ahead of all that. At our village, women folk, they are fond of having gopa. In the latest time of having shisha plus cocktail cigarettes, that is the trend of the day. Next, risk factor is previous pulmonary pathology, credit is infected by COPD, scleroderma, or previously operated sparrowman's tear. So it can be a resultant vector of cancer lung. Radiation exposure itself, the data collected out of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Chernobyl disaster, and rest of the places where radiation concern is there, directly exposure. So people, they get hurt. Analogic radiation, the mushroom of X-ray clinics in our country without precautionary measures, it results or the people who are working in the mines where radiation material is being exposed. Organization is the next risk factor. And occupational hazards are at the top, especially people who are working in asbestos, fluid, the particles they gather, settle down, use of the lung, triggering, and with the passage of time, they result as a cancer lung. People who are working in textile industry, leather industry, woodworkers, ship breakers, they are exposed. People who are working in metal, nickel, or chromium, and dress of carbon. People who are working in oil industry are exposed to the things 
here tubes are there. So these are the risk factors. How does it present? Ladies and gentlemen, you better understand a little soap can make a man sleep. So, the trigger is there, hitting the basal cell layer continuously, which is going to injure the DNA on cellular level. So, it takes time, there can be later period. But eventually, it results in cancer. So, signs and symptoms one can come with the local symptoms. 85%, the other 88%, they come with the symptoms, and 12% they are without symptoms. But for other disease evaluation, they are picked up. Cancer lab is there. Sign and symptom. There can be local manifestation, there can be regional manifestation or systemic form. Local manifestation, when growth is in the center, it produces cough, hemoptysis, respiratory distress, including wheezing, dyspnea. And irritability in general. Cough can be a result of dust, allergy, smoking, part of infective phenomena. But if we address the baseline, the root cause, it gets settled with the passage of time. But cough, because of cancer, it presents cases. Despite of using multi modal treatment schemes. If the growth is on the periphery, it can produce cough, pain, it can result in irritability. Respiratory distress can be there in, in periphery because the visceral layer is also involved. There can be indication of pain, severe pain as well. When regional involvement is there, the growth can touch interiorly the chest wall. It can give referee pain to the shoulder or if the brachial plexus it is involved as in pancreas tumor it goes up to the arm and then it is going to affect deeply or internally then the frequent laryngeal nerve is involved there can be hoarseness of cries so this mostly on the left side of the body because the left of the cancer. Or if it goes down, touches other organs, it can result as a part of phrenic nerve involvement, resulting in paralysis of diaphragm on that side. So, respiratory hazards, they result and aggravate the situation. If they are going to touch the esophagus, the gastral node, they are going to press from esophagus, there can be dysphagia. If they touch, The heart, cardiac tamponite can be there. If they touch the baseline, so 
field can be isolated. That is the manifestation of regional manifestation of cancer lung. The presentation of cancer lung signs symptom can be according to the involvement of the distant organs of the body. If it goes up to the brain, resulting in vomiting, vertigo, alternate mental condition. If it goes to the bone, then severe depiction of pain is there, which can result in fracture of that part of the bone due to demineralization of calcium there can be hypercalcemia which can be an acute adoption if it involves liver discomfort in right hypochondrium liver functions that are destroyed because in the changes there can be tenderness of the skin and skin as well. So the other organs, where distress metastases are there, they can produce their sign symptom. Next very important thing is certain histologic type of cancer lung they produce the harmonics chemical structures which act on the different system and produce the causal effect of cancer lung. They are known as paraneoplastic syndromes. They involve the different organs. If they involve the heart, cardiovascular disorders are there. From the virus can be there, non bacterial endocarditis can be there. If they involve the neurovascular system, subacute, cerebellar degeneration can be there, dementia can be there, optic neuritis, limbic encephalitis, peripheral neuropathy can be there. Myasthenia like syndrome, that is uterine lamp, limbal, where this weakness of pelvic and rest of the muscular structure. Polymyositis can be there, nephrotic syndrome can be there. If they involve GIT, carcinite syndrome can be there, anorexia can be there. which results in clear intake, weakness and weight loss. Fever, provided you know, there is growth or secondary metastasis, they are exposed to spread infection. They result in hybrid fever. Neurologic involvement can be there. It can be with cytosis, leukocytosis, they can produce the hassle. Metabolic changes. OCTH production is there, which can affect the rest of the body organs. ADH and deteriorated organs. Hypercalcium, I already discussed there is a demineralization of calcium. And size symptom. Of hypercalcemia. They start from lethargy, weakness of the, the coma, and other end. Paraneoplastic syndrome, there can be hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy, clubbing of nails, it can be there. <coughs> WHO and American Cancer Society devised the methodology to pick up the early stage cancer 
for different organs, including the breast, cervix, prostate, colorectal, carcinoma, skin, and other as well. A large different study just to evaluate screening for cancer lung. X-ray chest once and twice in a year they go for X-ray chest. So symptomatic patient they reveal 80 to 85 percent. But it can be called permanent effect, not pertaining particularly to the cancer. When they, that's why they didn't improve the chest X ray as a screening tool. Next, the school of psychology. After every four months, they call for school of psychology. 40 to 60 percent, it was positive in symptomatic patient. But this is the metric patient, it was false results. So they declined the sput of psychology as a tool for screening phenomena and cancer lab. Biochemical markers, the same which we discussed as a paraneoplastic syndrome. Those paraneoplastic syndrome, they can rise in other conditions as well. So it was not particular for cancer, no? especially calcitonin and rest of the biochemical marker for small cell carcinoma and secondary carcinoma. So screening as a part of authenticated phenomena of early detection Till time it is not established, but people they are working on it. Long range, multi diagnostic approach or evaluation approach, it is there. Still time, there is no let down guidelines for screening in cancer lab. Diagnostic worker. So, first and foremost, the department is just to make a great dream come true. First requirement is the great capacity to dream. And second is the endurance in the dream. That is the real phenomenon of Once we are equipped to take the best possible outcome from the patient of the medical history that is the baseline of your provisional diagnosis. Detailed medical history including the family background, nutritional status, previous history of any lung abnormality or interactions it is being taken as granted. Then followed by a thorough physical examination. Usually I talk, the best helping hand is at the end of your own arm. Provided you are properly motivated, your fingertips, they tell sensations. And you look upon the patient from head to toe and make up your mind. General appearance, physically, is he is or she is well nourished or not? Is there any signs of any abnormality, physical, mental? Then you have to observe organ by organ as a part of physical examination. Second, you have to see the better elasticity is according to the age and weight of the patient, or the failure of the skin, the thiosis, any abnormality, 
uh, any which is present at this time. As you can see, because the involvement of the peripheral there can be horror syndrome, it can be neurosis, dosis, and antidosis of that sort. So you have to see why at the same time you have to worry the sclera is even involved because of the range, your function test, mouth and throat, you have to see too. is there any abnormality over there? Often is but not neck nodes, manifestation of the disease, the chest, superficial, any sparring, any abnormality, breathing abdominal thoracic or otherwise. And you have to see the expansion of chest, percussion nerves, plus, plus, plus. Heart, you can go up to the heartbeat to the pelvic abdomen, abdomen, if there are any deposits in the abdomen, including Leo or other extra of abdomen, rectum, you can see from thiosis or the light bulb condition. Then, and the region, if there is any deposit, Living tendency, you have to go for clinical evaluation. So, this is general physical examination. Pathology, there are two major types non small cell carcinoma and small cell carcinoma. Non small, small cell carcinoma. There are other subtypes, secondary cell carcinoma is at the top. Small cell carcinoma is 20% of all the cases, large cell weight carcinoma, anaplastic, adenocarcinoma, it is 25-30% of all cases. That is non small cell carcinoma. Secondary cell carcinoma, again, it is further categorized. Or oh, grading are It can be paired with keratin and certain beautiful pinkish curves are there, characterizing secondary cell carcinoma. If they are differentiated as secondary cell carcinoma, they are categorized well differentiated in your carcinoma. Next, moderately differentiated, then poly differentiated. If bizarre complex is there, or pouch is there, only few cells they can be identified. It can be there. The same thing is adenocarcinoma. The glandular operators they give a result of adenocarcinoma. Scarcity cell carcinoma, small cell carcinoma. Usually they are centrally present, whereas adenocarcinoma, which is on the periphery, a bit metastasized, more or less compared to scarce cell carcinoma. Metastatic spread, there can be direct extension, nearby organs, they can be involved. Or Lymphatic drainage can be involved or otologically. So, as a result, they can go up to liver, bone, brain, adrenal, pancreas, skin, spleen, the productive organ. So, and the prime glands and thyroid as well. So, once the disease is metastasized, so baseline of all management it is entirely changed. It is staging. We discuss that we treat the cancer patient according to the stage of the disease. Stage one and two, 
they are supposed to be at least stage and stage three and four, they are supposed to be advanced stage. The staging phenomena, it gives the guidelines for treatment methodologies provided to localize diseases there, the surgery is the treatment of choice, followed by rest of the actual modalities. If a rest stage is there, we can bring the stage down with chemotherapy and radiation therapy prior to surgery. The stage comes down, so there is always enough space for surgical vulnerability which can be dealt with. Again, followed by chemo radiotherapy. Small cell carcinoma, it is supposed to be systemic one right from very beginning. There are three major presentations whether it can be a very limited disease, it can be medium disease or extensive disease. The tumor doubling time in small cell carcinoma is 33 days. It doubles in its volume and it reaches to the distant places. It involves the brain, bone marrow, and other other structure. So once it is diagnosed, the treatment of choice is systemic chemotherapy. It's aggressive, provided the age is below 60, performance status is good, so we have to go for full sleep. So in small cell carcinoma it can be a limited disease can be a medium or extensive disease which can involve the distant organ. Special thing is, while treating a small cell carcinoma, we go for prophylactic cranial radiation because small cell carcinoma by virtue of configuration and propensity of spread, it can reach to the brain, it can reach up to the bone marrow, yes. So, we require all sort of evaluation and diagnosis. Just to start with the treatment and so on, so on, that's enough. This is a staging of non of all In this type of disease for non-small cell carcinoma, we observe the TNM staging system, which was devised in 1987 by International Union Against Cancer in collaboration with American Cancer Society. In stage one, there is T1 lien, less than three centimeters in size, tumor is present in the parenchyma of lung or T2 lien when tumor size is more than 3 cm approaching near to the center but distant to the 2 cm of main bronchus or it can touch to the periphery with the same size and this pleura can be involved that is stage 1. TNM for non cell cell carcinoma. Stage 2, when tumor size is more than 3 cm in diameter, lymph nodes, peripronchal, alveolar nodes, they are involved, but not up to the metastasis. Or tumor size more than Three centimeter involve the node, but till this time it is near the main bronchus, distant two centimeter from the main bronchus. So this is the stage, or it can involve 
a central organ as well, which can push the things, the rest of the structure towards, and they can access to the metastinum as well, but not particularly. Stage three, tumor size is advanced. It can involve any part, visceral or it is near to the two centimeters from end bronchus can involve the intestinal nodes or hilar node as well. Sometimes they process the barrier and involve the supraclavicular nodes as well. They can cross the barrier. Counterlateral lip nodes, they are also involved. Full chain of diastenum and higher nodes, they are involved. They involve the recurrent laryngeal nerve resulting in hoarseness of thighs. The base of the lung they can involve, resulting in pleural effusion, or they can involve phrenic nerve, resulting in paralysis of diaphragm, which results in respiratory distress, dyspnea, and rest of the complication. This is the advanced stage you can see where heart is involved, the cardiac tamponade is there, it increases the size and involves the major nodes. The esophagus is also touched. Downwards, diaphragm is directly involved. If it comes anteriorly, then chest wall is the parameter for excruciating pain. It goes back involve the vertebral bodies, resulting in secondary zootia or disturbance in movements. So ladies and gentlemen, we discussed to treat all the solid cancers according to the stage of the disease. That means tumor burden. Whether the tumor burden is small, what can be the treatment policy? If it is advanced, what can be the treatment policy? Or if there are neurological involvement or blood cancer, the staging phenomena is entirely different and we use other tools of management. But here in salt tumor, especially the cancer lung. The treatment modalities, they are available. Surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, target therapy is part of chemotherapy. <clears throat> Plus it give a small cushion or advantage of Few weeks. The trend of the day for management is the combined modality approach. For early stage in non small cell carcinoma, that is, stem cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and a plastic cell carcinoma. So we go for TNM staging, but there are rule of thumb and guidelines for treatment in early stages and late stages. In early stages, stage one, stage two, and stage three A, we go for surgery, that is lobectomy by the segment resection, it can be killed. 10 to 15% of the cases, they are fit 
for surgery and result is 30 to 35 percent of the cases for five years survival left. That is the achievement of surgery because once the patient come to the cancer expert, the disease is already advanced. Because we have to go a series of investigation. This slide I think it is given somewhere. So for proper evaluation, we need routine test. So blood picture is there, pure function test, X-ray, ultrasonography, urine test, stool test, hypothesis, critical test. We are going to start with the endoscopy. We can go for bronchial biopsies through bronchoscopy. We can go for percutaneous thoracic biopsies and revision. So ultimate and biomarkers evaluation at the same time. Then we are going to establish for small cell carcinoma. If things are there, we go up to the bone marrow aspiration cytology or bone marrow biopsy as well. At the same time, we are going to evaluate the lung function test. We are going to evaluate the parameter for liver function test. Kidneys, if organs are involved, urea, retin, and for RT evaluation, we have to go for ECG, Photography and the rest of the evaluation. So these are the parameters. Then we have to go for further tumor markers and biomarkers evaluation. Long list: OCTH, ADH, calcitonin, serum calcium level, like that. So these are the parameter of evaluation. We have to tally all the investigations, all the tests as regarding. To the patient general condition. We have to apply to gather this paper presentation of all results of investigation. Does it tally with the condition of the patient? Then we treat according to the stage. And the treatment modalities are already related to surgery, non surgical cell carcinoma, stage one, stage two, and three A surgery procedures. Vacuum, bio vacuum, sequential resection, video stenoscopy, video stenoscopy, it is part and parcel. We have to see if the video nodes are there, then we have to reserve the decision for such because it is very difficult to get the things excised in total because. The residual mass can be there, it has to be served with radiation and chemotherapy later on. Surgery in early stage, provided the size of the tumor is there, lymph nodes involvement is there, we have to get it excised in total. We have to clear the whole region. Provided we go for post-operative evaluation, there is doubt, remnants are there, we have to go for chemotherapy and radiation therapy. In early stage, radiation therapy alone can also serve the purpose and 60 to 70,000 grade the unit of radiation. If it is combined with chemotherapy results are far better as compared to the radiation or not. Provided we go for surgery and post-op evaluation, if there are doubts, then again we have to serve the patient with radiation therapy. Just to get the all region rid of any cancer element. This is the treatment in early stage. In advanced stage, stage 3B and 4A, 
straight away. We have to go for radiation therapy and chemotherapy combined just to reduce the size of the tumor. If down staging is there in stage 3b, we can go for surgery again followed by chemo radiotherapy. That is the right time. And if the stage 4 is there, stage 4 only symptomatic and palliative treatment can be there. So ladies and gentlemen, treatment is of two kinds, radical treatment and palliative treatment. Radical treatment, especially for early stages, where we can get rid of the disease, and follow up is there for five years now. If we cannot get it excised surgically, or out of radiation therapy, or combined mortality approach, then we have to go for palliative treatment. That means the patient has to live with the disease, but as long as he survives, the quality of life, it must be up and above. Symptomatic and supportive backup is there. If temperature is there, we can survive. That. Pain is there, we can serve. Intake is poor, we can provide other limitation like that. If distress is there, we can use oxygen. So we have to teach the patient provided his body treatment or any wise member of the family to get the things at home. If there is any emergency to deal with, patient can be brought to emergency treatment site of the hospital. For advanced cases, the treatment of modality is the chemotherapy and radiation therapy if need be. we can go to that extent where symptomatic relief is there, but we cannot reduce the overall survival scenario. We have to make the patient comfort with advanced disease. Terminally care is our most necessary, which is not available at our place in Pakistan. Rest of the country, they have made the specialized unit where the patients, they are served for their internal conditions. At the same time, there are certain methodologies to give the comforts at home, just to teach and tutor the attendants and the patient as well how to take care when there is any emergency at home. Or if need be, how can a supportive and symptomatic measures can be approached at home. We all means prognosis in small cell carcinoma. It is very poor. Provided stages are being we take the care at the times and again things they crop up. Life span is eight to 16 months. But in non cell small carcinoma, in early stage, surgery is done, then 30 to 35% five year survival rate out of 10% cases who are able for such. The rest of the cases, they keep on advancing. Where Symptomatic treatment of supportive measures can be served. This is the enigma of our place. Number one, there is no awareness of grassroots level. We don't observe the don'ts and do's for our lifestyle, dietary intake, exposure, surroundings, occupational scenarios, and annual checkups. That is far most necessary, especially for the seniors. But otherwise, the annual medical evaluation is part and parcel of healthy living standard as a part of our plans. 
So there, this is a program at our place for early detection and screening of the cancer. At our 65% of our population, we reside in the villages where their minimum awareness, know-how is there. Evaluation facilities are equivalent to zero. Diagnostic facilities not present in BHU or even basic health units. At the city level and district level, only one percent of the level is there. But there is no referral system over there for early detection, pickup, and referral system to the hassle. So as a part of treatment management in cancer lab, small cell carcinoma, they are dealt with hemoglobin from very beginning. And during treatment, prophylactic cranial irradiation is there, plus symptomatic. Once the patient comes and treatment told on the initial stage of small cell carcinoma, one can go up to the stem cell after basic aggressive chemotherapy. So abroad it is being observed pilot projects are there. So they treat under clinical trials not open because even small difference in dosages or methodology, it can disturb whole of the treatment scheme. So these sort of patients they are entertained within the scenario of clinical trials so that possible maximum parameter of management must be observed. This is for small cell carcinoma and for non-small cell carcinoma the things we have to deal with surgery followed by chemo radiotherapy on early stage and in advanced stage we treat with chemotherapy and relative measures, supportive and symptomatic treatment. So by all means, we may have to take into account the background of the patient, financial constraints of the patients, and the academic acumen of the patient just to deal in total. Once the patient feels better on early stage of the disease, so rehabilitation is part and parcel of the management, how to bring the patient back to the normal routine of life. His walk, walk, look, look, and behavior as a part of family member, as a part of family society, on job, work, interactions with the other, interactions with the sweet, near and dear, and the other people as well. So, this is a full range of management methodology, but ultimately, it is a combined modality approach and the better teamwork interaction is the cornerstone of successful management. Thank you very much.